This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author and host of The Ken Coleman Show, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. If Ken Coleman's in the house, that means you are more than free to bring your career questions, your questions about job hunts, your questions about landing in a position that you have passion for as well as get paid well for and all that kind of stuff. So Ken's here to help. And you. See, you got a good opinion on that stuff, too. Dude, I got an opinion about everything. I know. And I'm an expert but on we my get, opinion. Yeah, but we get calls on the Kick Home Show about toxic culture. What do I do? I got a, a jerk boss, but I've got, I'm have got i paying off debt. I mean, Dave gives well, great perspective, Well, you got personal experience too. with that. No, stop it. <laughs> Not true. You know? But so many people are going, hey, can I pay off debt and switch jobs? Can I, can I change careers while in the baby steps? So Dave and I can take that on as well. We can tag team. Yeah, a lot of leadership junk out there as as well that affects people's hey is this the right place i'm doing the right work maybe i'm in the wrong place so th- there's a lot of stuff we can take on spouse hey my spouse is is stuck how do i encourage the spouse so a lot of questions we can answer uh, money and job related doing that meaningful work we're all here for you yeah the phone number 888-825-5225 and kelly has stepped out in madison which is actually uh, ken's assistant producer that's right and phone screener so she actually knows how to uh screen calls for ken <laughs> yeah, so. she, she can actually answer the questions as well <laughs> yeah well she's heard them all kelly can answer all my that's questions right. for Isn't sure that the truth and if you don't believe me ask her so <laughs> all right Genevieve is with us to start this hour in Los Angeles. Hi, Genevieve. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So happy to be on the call with you guys. You too. What's up in your world? All right. So we have a duplex. Um, we bought it about seven years ago, and we owe about 287 on it. Um, I guess I should start by saying I'm on baby step two. I have about $40,000 left to pay off in the combination of student loans and credit card debt that I refinanced and we've been aggressively paying it for the last two years about 60,000 has already been paid off and um, we were looking to refinance our duplex for a lower rate and a lower payment and our loan officer just told us you know what have you thought about refinancing pulling the cash out and reinvesting it so I'm wondering if that's a good idea it has a positive cash flow right now and um, that's kind of where I'm at I'm like do I continue paying off my debt or go ahead and reinvest. Yeah. Well, let me just add, tell you, if you ask a loan officer if you should borrow more money, that's like asking a dog if it's hungry. <laughs> All right. I had, a, I had yeah. a pug dog, and it would eat itself until it died if you didn't take the food away from it. And that's a loan officer. They will loan you money from, to, from today on. And I'm, they always have a good idea on how to raise their commission. <laughs> Yeah. So, no. Yeah. No, you're not trying to get into debt, darling. You're trying to get out, remember? Yeah, yeah. And it's funny because we come from a family of entrepreneurs and investors, and, and I'm just like, I want to be zero. Um, but, of course, you know, it's, tempt- it's temptation is like, you know, can we reinvest, you know, later on? Yeah. So. Well, the question you have to ask yourself is, what's the shortest distance between where you are and wealthy? Is it borrowing more money on the duplex and investing that? Or is it getting out of debt? And the actual data says it's getting out of debt. Okay. That's the shortest distance between where you are and wealthy. And so if we're going to get out of debt, because it's the shortest distance between where you are and wealthy, then getting into more debt would be oxymoronic, wouldn't it? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So what's your household income and how quick are you going to pay off this 40 k with your cash flow? Oh, within the year. 
I like year. you. Oh, that's our, awesome. I like you. So <laughs> yeah, just refinance our, our that refinance income. that duplex, put it on as short a term as you can put it on, yeah. on as low an interest rate as you can put it on, and let's get that duplex paid off now, too. Boom! Just like that. Dave, One seems, more loan officer yes, smacks silly. I know. I've been doing this 30 years, and it never gets old. Yeah, what is the score, Dave Ramsey? <laughs> one million to zero on that one? <laughs> uh, you know what, Dave? Seriously, I want to ask you a psychology question there, because th- what happens is she's, she's doing the right thing. She's working the baby steps. Mm-hmm. It's paid off Sixty thousand dollars, forty to go within the year. They're debt free, living like nobody else. And she calls a loan officer. They do what they do, not demonizing, but they, they're doing what they're doing. I will. And it, oh, I know you will. And it changes the narrative. So we have to switch the narrative back and go. No, I called to save money, which is going to help me get out of debt faster. Because if I'm saving money on the current mortgage payment, uh, it means more money towards the debt snowball. And that narrative just gets all jumbled in their minds. Yeah. It is human nature, and it is really actually intelligent in a way, to look for the easiest route. Mm -hmm. We want the easiest route. Right. And you really should. Why would you take the hard route if there's an easy one? I mean, it's It's intelligent intelligent to do that. Yeah, you want to take the easiest route. But the in search of the easiest route, we tend to, it's all of us tend to look for a pill. If I could just take that get out of debt pill, I'd be out of debt. Mm -hmm. If I could take that lose weight pill. I'd lose weight. <laughs> if I could take that, uh, make my marriage happy pill, we don't want to do the stuff. Uh, you know, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, yeah. but it yields a harvest of righteousness. Human nature is to look for the easiest route, and that leads us, if we're not careful, over the precipice into the get-rich-quick mindset, into the uh, – there's a shortcut. Right. Everybody knows about but me. That's right. And I think I found it. That's you know, the trap. There's not one. Yeah. There's no shortcut to any place that's worth going. And that's the trap, Dave. They it is a trap. The progress. Oh, progress is smart. So the very thing that's not smart, it's dumb to do that, to take on more debt. It feels smart because it's progress. It fe- well, it, it feels like it's a shorter yes, cut. I'm, it's I'm a shortcut. getting there quicker. Oh, it's that's an easier smart. route. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah. because, oh, look, I feel better. Mm-hmm. Uh, all that debt's gone. I don't have to think about it. And instead, i got to crunch and run, run and grind through the rest of the year. But then when it's gone, it's really gone. Mm-hmm. Because, see, here, here's, a, here's an interesting fact about the math on this. You cannot borrow your way out of debt. That is true. <laughs> Let that one sink in. Yeah, it just get that'll get you there in a minute if you keep digging. <laughs> you can't get out of a hole while digging out the bottom. And true. so you can move your debt to your home, mm-hmm. your duplex. Your you can move it around. That's what debt consolidation does. It allows you to feel like you did something, but the debt is still there. It yeah. just has a new name. That's right. It you just moved it. It's all you did. So please don't act like. You invented fire, okay? You didn't do something that was really. You, it, it, that's the, but that's the. That's why I call it debt consolidation. Here's here's how we know that this is true. Eighty eight percent of the people that take out a debt consolidation loan, to in quotes air quotes pay off their debt, which it wasn't paid off; it was just moved. Eighty eight percent. That's nine out of ten times, end up not changing their habits and running up new debt over there. So they move the credit cards over onto the second mortgage. And now they run up new credit cards because they don't change the habits. 88, 9 out of 10 times. But it felt like mm. you were doing something. Oh, yeah. Very smart. This is a smart move. I'm, I'm getting a lower interest rate. I'm right. getting a lower interest rate. Right. Right. We better off with a lower interest rate. <laughs> it's all about the interest rate. It's not about the fact that I can't freaking stop my spending like I'm in Congress. Mm-hmm. And so, and that's not Genevieve. This is just a thing. This is the Dave, This is the Ramsey Show. Folks, it's an honor to tell you about the Army National Guard. Not only are they big supporters of our high school curriculum, but they also give you the opportunity to impact your local communities. Whether your goals are to get an education, serve your country, or have a better life, the Army National Guard can help you get there. Plus, they offer unbelievable financial benefits. Secure your future today. Visit nationalguard.com slash Ramsey to find out more.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host here today on The Ramsey Show. Thank you for joining us. The phone number here, 888 825 As we talk about your careers, your money, your life, anything you want to talk about. Speaking of careers, here at Ramsey Solutions, we are trying to do something pretty radical. We want to transform so many lives that disruption spreads like wildfire across our country. Imagine a world where it's weird to have a student loan, where the majority of people pay cash for their cars, where the credit card has become the cigarette of the financial world, where living and working in a job that you love, in a career field that you love and prospering is normal instead of statistically philosophically unusual at ramsey solutions that's why we have a thousand people at this company working together to create digital products and all kinds of goods and services to help people transform their lives with the goal of disrupting this toxic culture and if you don't think that the culture in america is toxic you haven't come outside lately if you want to join us on that crusade we're currently on the hunt for many software engineers Ruby on Rails, Java, C-sharp, front-end technologies. If you're a UX designer, we need you. SEO, content marketing specialists, we'd love to talk with you. Digital designers, we're there, baby. Any, Just about anything. We've got about 360 positions to fill this year. We are exploding here. We're just finishing up a new building next door, and that means there's room for people. It's that simple. So find out about all these opportunities at DaveRamsey.com. Click on the right-hand side button. It says Dave's hiring. If you're a senior-level developer, how about this? When you teach people and mentor people and coach people to write code, they're writing code that changes people's lives, not that's going into a black hole. It actually matters. Oh, and by the way, we go home at 6 o'clock. We don't work you 80 hours a week. We have this weird idea that you should actually be a good dad and a good mom and be home with your kids. And uh, that's really weird if you're in the technology world because they try to kill people in the technology world. It's almost like first-year law students, isn't it? Mm, They just churn through them. Yeah. Churn and burn, baby. All right. Ashley's with us in Sacramento. Hey, Ashley, what's up? Hi. How are you doing? Great. How can we help? Um, so I just have a question. So my husband and I were, were debt free. We luckily were able to get through school without any debt. And, uh, my husband just landed his first job out of school and he's making some, some good money. So we opened up with his 401k and then also opened up a Roth IRA and we've, um, been contributing a little bit. Um, but I know you recommend 15% to mm-hmm. go towards retirement, but we're also trying to save for a down payment. So I was wondering, do you still recommend the 15% while we're trying to save for that? Mm-hmm. Or is it okay to do a little less? Or? Okay. How old are you guys? Um, I'm 21 and he's 24. Okay. Well, first let's establish you've got some time. There is not a rule that says you go to hell if you don't buy a house by 25. <laughs> okay, you're going to be okay. You're going to you got a little time to work on this. You don't have to panic. Um, you're going to be just fine. And you've done a really good job so far. Very well done. All right. Two things. One is we teach a process called the baby steps. One is a thousand dollars saved. You've done that. Two is debt free. You've done that. Three is a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. Have you got that? Yes, we do. Good. Excellent. Okay. And what's your household income? Um, so he's making 60000 and I'm still job searching. But. Cool. So what do you think you'll be making when you land something? Um, probably around thirty. Okay. So you're going to have roughly $100,000 income, 90 to hundred k right in there. And you're just beginning your career, so it'll go up. That's excellent. Okay. Now, we teach after people are at Baby Step 3, they have their emergency fund and they're debt-free. If they are ready to buy a home at that point then you would save up your down payment. If you want to put your retirement savings on hold temporarily, we call that baby step 3B. Baby step 3 being the emergency fund, 3B be being saved for the down payment on your home. Okay? Okay. And if you want to, so if you want to sit out of retirement for two years or three years and pile up cash very rapidly. Now, the other thing I'm hearing is, I think I'm hearing you're not on a written budget. And you guys need to get a detailed written game plan 
because uh, you would have known exactly what was going on. You've got general concepts, and again, you've done a really good job. But I want you to get in a detailed written budget. Jump on every dollar. It's an app you can download for free and start to figure out how to put that budget together or look at a free uh, uh, trial at Ramsey Plus where you can use the every dollar premium budget version and get through the classes as well. Julie is with us. Julie is in Nashville. Hi, Julie. How can we help? Um, yes, I have a question. So for accreditation at my job, the mean salary for my position is about 12 k more than I'm making. And I have a t- about two years before I can make the next level. And I just wondered if I, you know, talking about her kids say, don't go after a raise, but how you can develop and grow. And so if I go and ask for a growth plan, should I mention, like, you know, I, I know that because the tables are posted, like I'm less than this that I'm at the current salary, you know, at my current position. Um, I do know that I, for my location, I make uh, more money in the area than, you know, other jobs in the area. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I didn't quite understand that last part because I think it's got to be industry specific. So if you're talking about industry specific. Right. It's industry specific. Okay. Yes. But what you're saying is the median across the nation, you're about 12,000 lower. But not in your no, area. But not my, in your area. No. Yeah. Yeah, so for my area, for my area, I'm actually higher. Okay. But for my my specific company, Got I'm it. actually 12k less than what they post for my title. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. So that's great information. Uh, and so you're right. Uh, I want the rest of the audience to hear this, Dave. I don't like people going in and asking for a raise. It puts your leader in a very awkward position if there's been no conversation there. And so at Ramsey Solutions, we've got a wonderful, wonderful. Um, rhythm around this, around growing, and that is we have a very clear KRA, key results area. It's one page uh, for everybody, including the personalities. And so there's clear uh, goals. There's clear uh, boundaries for this is the work that I'm responsible for. These are the results I'm responsible for. And then we meet every year, an annual meeting. And of course, there's meetings all the time around here with our leaders. But here's here's the deal. I don't want you to ask for a raise. I want you to sit down and say, hey, I want to grow. And I I know that I need to grow my skills. I'd like to know from you if we could get together. Don't put them on the spot. But say, hey, I'd like to have a meeting soon where we talk about a growth plan that includes me adding some skills that you think maybe I need to add, uh, strengthening some areas where I'm I'm good, but I could be better to add more value to the organization. And then you want to say, hey, as a, I want to do those things. I want to be measured on that growth. And as a result, I'd like to see how that may lead to additional responsibilities and more influence in my position or in the company. And and when I'm growing professionally, then that leads to a natural conversation of growing my income. And so that's how I like people to, to bring the leader in, let the leader have some ownership and speak into uh, your growth. And I think because you're in a situation where you're paid, you could go in with information and say, hey, here's what the median is. And I've done some research on this. But I, I, I don't like bringing that into the conversation until there's a growth plan that's agreed upon. Because here's what I know, Dave, in a healthy organization with healthy leadership, they will respond the right way. And they'll say, sure, we can do that. And if they don't have the built-in systems that we have at Ramsey Solutions, this can develop that. And healthy leadership will accept that and figure that out if they don't already do it. And then the conversation, Dave, if, is... Is it okay off the back end of that conversation to say... Because I noticed that I'm twelve thousand below the posted amount, and I want to know what I need to do to be worthy. That's of that. it. You bring that up after you say, "Hey, I want to grow and make myself more valuable yeah. to the company with yeah. your measurement." Yeah, and and that's I, 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 I do want them in that conversation they to recognize to that it. she's being paid less than their stated amount. Yes, and absolutely. That, that's a. I would want to know that as the leader. But you do that in the actual meeting that we described, not Fall setting the, up the meeting. Yeah, off the back yes, of sir. the conversation, not in the op- actual meeting. You're not itself. opening the conversation with that. That's you're right. closing the conversation with that. Yep, that's yeah. it. That's I got it. Okay. Yeah, because I would want to know that as the leader so I could make the adjustment because I would to. go, oh, crap, I didn't realize yeah, it. You that's know, exactly there you right. Go.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. This is the Ramsey Show. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Michael is with us. Michael's in Boise, Idaho. Hey, Michael, how are you? I'm better than I deserve. How about yourself? Better than I deserve, sir. How can I help? <laughs> um, I got a quick question for you. My wife and I are in baby steps four, five, and six, and I've got some savings bonds that my granddad gave me for my birthdays and Christmases growing up as a kid. Mm-hmm. They totaled about nine hundred dollars. So we're not talking about a lot of money here, but I do want to honor my granddad with what I do with this money. So I have a two-part question. First would be, uh, Dave, do you have a guiding principle on how to honor financial gifts given by family members who have passed away? Mm. Well, I I always just – it's a a general concept. I always just think, well, when I do this, is he going to be in heaven smiling? Mm Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm. That's really good. And so, you know, it, it might be that he told you this is for your college, and it didn't ever end up getting used for college for whatever reason, and instead he hated debt and you used it to pay off a credit card. Mm. Well, he'd be smiling, even though it wasn't the sure. original intent, because it, but it matches with who he is or was, right? Right. You know, so my granny used to give us savings bonds all the time for our kids' college. And, of course, they don't pay squat. And so as soon as I could get no, a hold, as soon as I could get a hold of them, uh, and she, she bless her heart, she believed in savings bonds, and she was religious. She gave us those fifty dollar, hundred dollar, two hundred dollars to pop. They're coming in for the kids, and as soon as I could cash them out, I cashed them out and put them in a mutual fund. And uh, bless her heart, I told her the truth. I did not lie to her. She would say, "How's those savings bonds doing?" I said, "They're doing great, Granny." <laughs> Because yeah. they are. They're now in a mutual fund, so they're actually freaking <laughs> producing something. But I didn't give her the details. I just told her the truth. They're doing great now. Because her intent was to help the kids have some money for college. And th- her intent was uh, what I did with them. I, I didn't go uh, buy a steak at a steakhouse for myself. Right. That would not have made her smile, right? And then I would have had to lie to her or tell her the truth and she'd been mad or whatever. But... You know, but but the the point is, you know, what's the right thing to do? And, and, you know, that's my guiding principle on honoring, whether they're alive or dead, but certainly where there's inheritance, what it does is it keeps you from doing something childish. Mm. Like if right. you, your grandpa leaves you $100,000 in Exxon stock and you go buy a used Lamborghini, well, that's dumber than a rock. Yep. You know, and that ain't going to make him mm-hmm. smile because he can't spell Lamborghini. I can just tell you that. So... You know, I know I can. That that's, makes two of us, Michael. You know, I, well, I mean, that, that's the whole thing. So the the, the point is just because you, when you get an inheritance, you kind of have oh, it's like you said, it's nine hundred dollars, not a lot of money, but put a couple zeros on it, it's ninety grand now, okay? And, and so if it's ninety grand, then you know what you have is you have a little bit of that lotto moment, like whoa. Yeah. Game on, baby. Yeah. Road trip. Yeah. You know, and you start thinking about what you're going to do with this yeah. money that's really irresponsible and immature. Yeah. I got a thought here, Michael. I'm just going to give you this and you take this. Um, if it were me, because of your financial status, baby step four, five, and six, you're rocking it. $900 is not going to make that big a difference. It's not like you, it, it would take care of a baby step uh, or, excuse me, a, a, a debt in the debt snowball. I, I would ask yourself or maybe talk to your mom and dad. What if you knew him well? What what did he love? What fired his soul up? Was there a cause? Was there an activity that that he really loved? And if it were me, I, I would do something really cool or consider doing something really cool with that nine hundred dollars around that something because I I heard in your voice you want to honor him and you're doing such good with your finances nine hundred bucks doesn't make a huge difference. I love you can use it uh, in your baby steps and keep on rolling. Or you could do something cool here, Dave. That let's just say he was. He was into hunting or he, he, he was into woodwork or something. And you could bless somebody maybe who's starting out or, uh, or, or you know. A generosity move. Generosity yeah. In, yeah. The, in the spirit of your grandfather. Yeah. That he would smile from heaven on that. Amen. Erica's with us in Fort Lauderdale. Hey, Erica, what's up? Hi, Dave. Hi, Ken. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Dave. You changed me and my husband's life. No, Just you did. I'm stuff. proud of you. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Um, so my husband and I, um, we our, our question is whether we keep our house or not. We um, we actually are in ministry. We uh, live overseas um, right now in the Caribbean, and and basically uh, we are we have a house in Fort Lauderdale, and we're fully supported by churches. So, um, but the thing with our house right now is it um, we're planning to stay where we are maybe for the next five to nine years. We've we've come to that decision. So we have this house in Fort Lauderdale, and it needs a new roof, 
insurance isn't paying for it, so we can't go through that. Um, it's South Florida, so taxes are really high, and we're learning about all this. We didn't realize this with taxes and everything. Um, and so we're just considering selling it. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> okay. Today. <laughs> wow. This thing's not a blessing. It's a curse. Mm-hmm. It's not bringing you peace. Yeah, that's true. And it's not. You- it's not adding to your life. Can you make money on it? Yeah, they'll make money on it. You can make money on it, can't you, when you sell it? Yeah, 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 Dave, yeah. Yeah, it's I just scary, wanted to confirm so, that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so think about some, that. Put some money in the bank to ensure, yeah. that, to ensure that your missionary endeavor doesn't run up underfunded at some point. Yeah. yeah. And you, you, all the missionaries keep, this is the problem, is all the missionaries tell us, and we just witnessed it, don't sell your house. Like, this is the thing with missionaries. They they don't have anything when they go back, so they're like, "Don't sell your house, whatever you do." So I think a big part of us is like, if we sell it, you know, we don't want that money that. Well, we, I like, I we disagree could... with that sentiment, and I have told missionaries that for thirty years. That is a wrong statement. Wow. You should sell your house. If you're going to be gone wow. five years, you should sell your house. It take the proceeds mm-hmm. and take whatever you would have spent on a house payment and invest it in good mutual funds so that you have a nice house fund to buy a home when you come home. Mm. Yeah. But the idea that you need okay. to keep your property and try to be a long distance landlord while you're trying to serve Jesus in the Caribbean, that is just dad gum hard. That, that just adds pain to your life, not blessings. Yeah. Scarcity mm. versus abundance. You, you're not going to be homeless when you come back. Yeah. You, Especially you, if you do you need you to in, You need to have a plan to have a home when you come back. Sure. Now that part, that's what's driving them to make the statement of mm-hmm. never sell your house because mm-hmm. they're afraid they're not going to have the money to buy a house because they've never saved anything. So if you don't plan to have a home when you come back by investing, then, you, then, then you've made a real mistake. But you need to plan by continuously investing to be ready to return. Let's run the numbers out on that, Dave, because I think it was great advice. I mean, just a ballpark number. Let's say they make a hundred grand on their house, or one hundred fifty, and they put it in a mutual fund. She said they're going to be there five to nine years. She puts it in a good mutual fund. That becomes that housing fund. If all of their other expenses on the mission field are covered, that becomes a sizable down payment. It'll it'll double. Yeah, it'll double in about seven years. That's the narrative again. That's not happening. Yeah, but if you take that money and spend it to live on the mission field, and you have zero money and zero house, and you come off. Yeah. That's the fear that has created this thing. Oh, never sell your house when you go on the mission field. Now, if you're going on the mission field for six months, that's a different thing. These people are going to be gone five, seven years, ten years, whatever. So that's a different, that changes the equation as well. Kimberly is in San Bernardino, California, but we're going to come to her after this commercial break. I just looked up and saw the uh, saw the clock creeping up on us. Homeowners insurance can be one of those set it and forget it kind of things. When you first bought your home, you may have just gone with whatever coverage the lender had or the realtor suggested or whatever you need to get your insurance requoted go to one of our endorsed local provider insurance agents they are independent brokers they will shop among several different companies and get you the best possible price on your home or auto or both the average person coming in uh to this it saves about 700 dollars a year and the quote to get how much does it cost to get a quote nothing it's free so text the word home to 33789. You need to continuously check on your insurances to make sure you're not being overcharged. One of the things she was just talking about was the cost of insurance in South Florida. It's very real. So text HOME to 33789. HOME to 33789.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. You can hear the Ken Coleman Show on Sirius XM as a podcast or on about 75 radio stations around America, so be sure you tune in. He speaks every day to people all over America about how to get and keep the best career path that puts you into what he calls your sweet spot, living your passion. Kimberly is with us in San Bernardino, California. Hi, Kimberly. How are you? Good. Hi, Dave. I had a question. Um, Me and my husband are kind of debating. Um, Our question is, should my husband take a new job? And depending on the retirement, we don't know a lot about retirement, so we don't know the questions that we should ask. He currently has a job where he has a tier one and tier two that he pays into. He works for the railroad. Mm -hmm. So the new job, from what we know, that he was offered does not offer retirement, but they match 6%. I don't know what questions to ask to make a wife's choice. Okay. Um, well, I mean, if, if they're, if they have a 401k that they match in 6%, that sounds like a fairly normal company type position versus the railroad, okay. which has a very unusual retirement system. Okay. Okay. So what does your husband make at the railroad? He, you want to know hourly? No, annually. Okay, I have the paper in front of me. So annually, um, I don't, okay, so annually it shows, I don't think it has one here. So I'm thinking around. What does he bring home? What's he bring home a month or a week or whatever? Okay, so he gets paid every two weeks about twenty one. Hundred dollars. Twenty one thousand after ten. Yes. Twenty one hundred dollars, and so forty two hundred dollars a month. So forty eight thousand dollars a year, and so he's making mm-hmm. about sixty sixty five thousand, depending on what's coming out of his check. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yes. Okay. Now, what's the new job pay? Twenty five dollars an hour. So Which, whatever that is times eighty times okay. a month. I don't know what that is, but um, 50 grand. Okay. Thank you. Uh, guy in the lobby just helped me. All right. <laughs> so uh, you're going to make about the same or a little bit more at the new job. Okay. Right. Okay. Now the question yes. here though is how old is he? My husband's 30. Okay. So when he's 60 old, like me, mm-hmm. what's he going to be glad he spent the last 30 years doing? Which one of these? What? I think saving for retirement and paying off. No, 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 no. That wasn't what I was talking about. Ken, Ken, this is yours. Yeah. So here's the thing. We've we've got the numbers right. He's making 60 to 65 now on the railroad. This new job is going to pay him about 50. So it's a pay cut. Uh, if we got those Correct. numbers right. So that's the first yeah. issue. But what Dave was asking is, is why does this guy want this job? Why does your husband want the job? Does he want it because he loves the work and it's, it's work that matters to him in long term? He hates the railroad. Yeah. Why does he want the well, what's why? the What's the reason for well, the new job? With the railroad, he can't go up anymore. So that's the top Okay, thing. good. So, so he's capped out. with new job, mm-hmm. yes, correct. Good. So with the new job, he does start off at 25, but after three to six months, he goes back to 32. There we go. Then, now, so, now we're moving in the right direction. So this is a temporary pay cut for the opportunity correct. to advance, and not just financially, but also professionally. What would he be doing at the new job? Um, so far, what I know, it's called the Operator D. So it's um, Borax. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Borax. It's called Boron Rio Tinto. So they, um, it's a mine, and they do minerals. So he would be packaging, shipping out minerals, everything to do with, um, yeah. it's not under the ground mine, it's above the ground. It has to do with the minerals. They put sure. them in electronics. When he talks so to you, when he talks to you about it, what do you think his excitement level mm-hmm. is? Sorry, I didn't hear you. What, what you do think? you think his excitement level is when you hear him talk to you about this new job on a scale of one to 10, one, no excitement, 10, he's throwing a party. What's his excitement level when he talks to you about this new job? 10. Then it's a no-brainer. So you guys don't need yes. to plan so for the short term. we don't know about term. retirement. It, listen, well, Dave will answer that. It, it, listen, you take the 401k, okay. you get out of debt, you do your baby steps. Mm-hmm. Baby step three is okay. in place of three to six months of expenses. You're debt-free. And then you put 15% of your income away for retirement, and you will retire wealthy. 15% you said? You need to put 15% of your income away for retirement, and they're going to match another okay. six. And so you're okay. going to retire wealthy if you do that. Okay. 
So you're fine. You're that not. You're, you are not. You are not going to retire and have to eat Alpo. That's right. Okay. Good and to know. Here's hey. the here's the other thing. Never take a job <laughs> ever. Ever. <laughs> Just for the money. Right. Never take a Correct. job ever because of the freaking benefits package. It's true. Always okay. take a job because it has a bright future mm -hmm. and makes you smile doing the work. Yes. This is the way you make a decision on a job, yeah. not based on the freaking 401k match. That's exactly right. Now, let's go back into our baby steps, Dave. Let's walk Let's walk other people through this because this call, we get this a lot on the Ken Coleman Show, and I know a lot of people listening and watching right now are feeling this too. So this is a temporary pay cut, okay? So in three to six months, he's going to go from 25 an hour to around 32 an hour. So they need to get back into their budget and go, okay, we have to plan for a temporary pay cut but it's temporary so we got to adjust the budget we plan for this and we absorb this your thoughts on that yeah absolutely absolutely don't act like it's not happening yeah because they only end up you know i ran up five thousand yeah. dollars in credit card debt because yeah. we took a pay cut yeah. you know that's just that's dumber than a rock yeah. don't do that so you got to plan it it's going to happen it's yeah. going to happen so plan on the, the drop in pay make sure you're going to break lower your lifestyle to fit that mm -hmm. and then you can then you can begin your investing process later. But, yeah, railroad retirement is incredible. It is not so incredible that you should keep a job making absolute ceiling on your ability to progress and keep a job that you don't like doing. Yeah, this is important to point out I, that you know when it's time to consider moving on, when you – have been told and it's been made obvious to you that you've hit your lid. Now you've got to sit back and go, okay, am I okay with this lid? Because Dave, you know this, we as humans are creatures of progress. It's just wired into us by our creator. We want to make progress. We want to grow. Uh, some people have gone so far as to say, if you're not growing, if you're not learning, you're dying. Now, you, there are some jobs where you go, hey, this is it. And I'm good here, and this is it. But for those of you who want more in your work, and you're in a, an environment where, because of the organization or the leadership, there is an artificial lid on you. You're not moving up. It's time to start thinking about moving on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is that aware on you? Jeff is in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hi, Jeff. What's up? I'm doing well. How about you guys? Good. How can we help? So I'm curious. I have $61,000 in an IRA rollover account uh, from previous work history. I'm curious if I should roll that into a Roth IRA. Uh, I'm in baby step two. No. Because you're okay. going gonna to create $12,000 worth of taxes to add to your baby step two. So I am. Um, hear me out for a second. So uh, I owe seventeen five on my truck. I have fifteen five in savings, and I'm getting ten thousand dollars back uh, in taxes this year. Mm -hmm. So that's going to wipe out my debt. We'll be on baby step three. Good. And you still uh, don't have you back. still don't have an extra fifteen thousand dollars to pay the taxes. Uh, so my numbers, if I moved half of it, I would get twenty seven hundred. Okay, let's let's, let's, let's just stop. Okay. Truck. I would not okay. do this. Okay. I okay. would. I, it's an old 401k. Is that what you said? Yes. I would roll it to a traditional IRA in good mutual funds. Later on in your wealth building, I would convert it to a Roth in a few years after you get the house paid off and do some other things and you've got some extra cash laying around. But when you throw $15,000 or whatever at this, you know, a fourth of it's going to be taxes roughly at this account because you're rolling it to a Roth, then that's money you could have used to build your emergency fund, build your kid's college fund, get the house paid off, and some things you should do before you send the government money. And so I instead would just move it to a traditional IRA and let it sit there and grow in some good mutual funds and convert it to a Roth later. You need the $15,000 that you would be spending on taxes to do things that are more important than this becoming a Roth today. It's a matter of priorities. You do what you want, but that's what you asked. This is The Ramsey Show.
is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality and career expert, host of the Ken Coleman Show, author of the number one best-selling book, The Proximity Principle is my co-host today so you've got questions about career about jobs well you can mix those in with the questions where we talk about life and money the phone number 888 ann is with us in orlando florida hi ann welcome to the ramsey show hello thank you so much for taking my call sure what's up um well i'm a widow and i just um am really concerned about my debt my future on a positive, I just received a $10,000 check in the mail. On the opposite end, my primary mortgage was just sold to a lender that I'm not comfortable with. I need a new roof, and I have a HELOC. So I'm considering refinancing all of that together. Um, it would also be at a much significant um, interest rate. And then for the and then taking that $10,000 check and throwing that at the credit card, and I have a bonus check next month that I think will take care of the one other debt that I have. Is that a good plan to get me set up so that I can retire hmm. well in the future. How old are you? I'm 53. Okay. And what do you make? About 63 a year. Okay. When's your husband pass? Um, he passed five years ago. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, sounds like you are really on top of things. Proud of you. Very well done. Oh, I like I'm fine. Ev- I have my moments. <laughs> I like everything in your plan except borrowing to do the roof. Okay. So your plan is really good. You need to get rid of that HELOC and that higher interest rate mortgage by refinancing and get a cheaper rate. I love that part of the plan. That's really good. The $10,000 towards the credit cards makes a lot of sense. Is the roof leaking? It is not, um, but locally, a lot of the insurance companies are requiring that people re-roof their homes, and the roof on my house is probably about 20 years old, so it's getting about time that it's going to need to be done. Okay. Do you have a bid on it? I have people coming out next week to give me bids. Okay. How big a house is it? Um, it's uh, twenty. It's 2,300 square foot, but is I it, also have a 600 square foot lanai, and that just has a different type of roof. Yeah. Is it asphalt shingle roof? Yes, it is. Okay. All right, cool. You make 63, and you have much, how much credit card debt? There's 17 on the card. Okay. And that's your only debt other than your home? Um, I have one other debt. I, I still I have twelve hundred dollars left on the monument um, for our gravesite, and anticipating being able to pay that off next month with my, with a bonus check. Okay. How much is your bonus check going to be? Um, it varies, um, but it, it generally it should be about a net of thirteen hundred dollars. Okay. All right. So we've got counting the ten thousand. We've got eleven thousand three hundred dollars. We got a twelve hundred dollar bill and a seventeen thousand dollar bill. Right. Yes. Okay. So let's get in attack mode, knock the little bill out, and let's get those credit cards knocked out. Make sure they're cut up, finish paying off that debt, build your emergency fund, and then build your roof fund. And refinance okay. your first and your second together. Uh, I, I don't want you going into debt further on this house because part of your retirement plan is getting this house paid off. Um, yes, it is. I have a lot of equity in the house. And I should still be able to get the house paid off in 15 years. Yeah. Well, you, I, I, yeah, you're going to because you're not going to borrow for the roof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to put this on a 15-year, and you're going to be done with it sooner than that. And you're going to save up and pay cash for this roof. And you're going to be able to make all of that work because you're going to lay out a detailed plan. And um, the good news about you is you are really paying attention. I'm very proud of you. There's not anything happening on accident here. You've spent a lot of time thinking about this, and it led you to really good conclusions, except for that one detail. And so, you you know, you really have done, you know, you you did really smart when you came on the air. Everything you're going doing is in the right direction. Joseph's in Kansas City. Hi, Joseph. What's up? Good afternoon, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Honor to be talking with uh, with you and uh, Ken on the show today. You too. Uh, this is more of a mindset question more than do we have the funds. Okay. 
Um, I have actually been unemployed for ten months. My wife has been working. I do collect an, um, I do collect. Uh, basically, we've saved money aside to build a home, mm-hmm. and uh, it, we're having a. Ri- we've been saving for over twenty years to actually buy or build a newer home, and now it's come time. I've been, I inherited property three years ago, and um, it was actually burned down piece of property, but beautiful piece of land, and. You know, we currently own the home, our home now. Mm-hmm. We have absolutely no debt. Live in old Dave Ramsey way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, our newest car is from 1999 that mm. we keep it running. Mm. Uh, so, you know, we're looking for for actually some guidance beyond family because everyone else in the family says live on debt. We do not believe in that at all. We have absolutely no debt. So, regarding this, it's more of a mindset question. We, uh, we've been saving for 20 years. We can actually, we have the cash to build the home, but we're just having such a hard time of actually signing that contract to go ahead and begin to build. Why? Because it's been over 20 years, um, of saving, living very frugal, way below our means. Which would make me want to sign that contract and get this crap done. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good point, Dave. And, you know, uh, both of us, we've never made more than 20 bucks an hour. Uh, the house bill itself is going to be about 240000 How much the is in savings? Uh, we currently have 416000 cash. In retirement, we have 308000 Okay. So um, what is it that's scaring you? It's the fact of... I just have not ever made a whole lot of income, and it's going to take a long time to replace that two hundred thirty, two hundred forty thousand dollars that we're going to be spending. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, primarily, it's a matter of finding another position. Um, I'm actually starting my own investment advisory firm. I've been financial coaching no fee for years, mm-hmm. and it's something that I love to do. But I'm still looking for employment. And, um, well, if you want to so, wait until you get employment and that gives you the sense of stability to do this, that would not be illogical. Yeah. But Joseph, okay. here's the deal. You got plenty of money, but if, if, it, if, yeah. if that's the last emotional hurdle, 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 uh, that says, I, you know, I really want to have a job for a break ground on this thing. There's nothing that says you have to start today. Right. And uh, Dave, I got to address this. Joseph, you, when Dave asked you point blank, what the fear is, it's, it's, I've saved so much money over so long a period of time and once i spend it on this house it's gone and it's not let's say that 10 15 years from now you want to sell that house that's going to appreciate you paid cash for it if i'm understanding that right that money's coming back and then some yeah and the home you're in yeah, is perfect yeah yeah and the home you're in is paid for and it turns into a really nice rental property i suppose hi uh, yes sir it's actually it's just a little two-bedroom home yeah. um you know joseph do it great man. rental property do it you're ready to go if you want to wait till you get a job that's fine but you're ready to go there's nothing financially out of place here it's just hard to, you're right it's hard to turn loose so you took you a long time to get here and you kind of like that pile of money being there yeah and uh that, that's a normal human reaction so, but it's, you did it. You, you, this is what you did it for. Now enjoy the fruits of your hard work and discipline. You know, healthcare has gotten to be ridiculous. It puts people, um, you know, on the brink. And so it would have put us on the brink had we not had CHM. CHM saved our life, saved our financial lives. Christian Healthcare Ministries, or CHM, is not health insurance, but it is a budget friendly option and the original health cost sharing ministry for Christians. Get started today and check us out at chministries.org backslash budget.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Amelia is in Boston. Hi, Amelia. How are you? Hi, Dave. Hi, Ken. I'm well. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, so I'm calling in today to get some guidance on getting on the same page with money uh, as my grandmother, actually. Um she has given me a very generous gift um, and put it in a trust for me of $100,000 earmarked for tuition and for a purchase of my first home when the time comes. So we've taken chunks out of that over the years um, for tuition, and there's about 75000 left. I personally, outside of that, am just about to finish Baby Step 3, so I'm looking to purchase my first home in the next one to three years. Now, the question here that's causing some uh, contention and disagreement is that that money is all invested in the market, mostly in index funds right now. And with me wanting to use it in the relatively short term, uh, my position is that we should take it out and have it in cash. Well, my grandmother's position is, you know, it's done well, it's earned great returns over the last several years. Why would we not want to continue that? So I'm looking on guidance as to how to have that conversation um, and do what I believe is the right thing with this money while, you know, still being extremely grateful for the gift. She gave you the money, and she put it in trust, and she's managing the trust. Correct. She's a bit of a control freak. Uh, I, I think with, with money, it's mainly a position of experience. You know, I'm 22. She's 74. So uh, she's got a lifetime of experience, and it, it does seem to me a bit controlling. You know, I'm a natural saver, been financially responsible yeah, my I mean, whole life. But, but, my yeah, family knows you, that. You, so. you're, you're in control. And the money was given to you to buy a house, and you can't take it out and buy a house with it. Right. I don't understand. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's that's the point that I'm stuck at, is how to have that conversation. Yeah. Um, so are yeah, you? when are you going to buy a house? Um, probably in two or three years. Why two I'm, or three years? Uh, because I'm not sure that I want to stay in this area long term. So, okay. uh, you know, I'm waiting to get a little confidence there before I make the financial commitment to a house. Okay. Well, this is more of an issue of, uh, you know, puppet master than it is actual financial advice. Right. And, and so that, you know, you just got to decide which hill you want to die on. Um, as, as far as the, you know, her advice goes, it's not the end of the world. Okay. Let's say that those index funds went down. 10% during that three years, which would be one of the worst three-year periods in the stock market's history. Sure. Then you would have lost $7,000. Right. Yeah, it's it's not end of the world either yeah. way. Yeah. And, and so, and if it goes up 10% during that time, you would have made $7,000. So, yep. you know, you, you, your fear of this money not uh, of this money being in the market is not substantial, shouldn't be substantial because the actual dollar figures aren't going to be substantial. Her wanting to take advantage of the market is almost laughable because it's also going to be about seven thousand dollars. Right. It's a f philosophical thing, you know. Is really all it comes down to. So, you know, it the and that reveals th that you guys are both being drama queens about this. Yeah, that's fair to say. Um, yeah, it's you know, it's not a big deal either way, but it's difficult to have the conversation. Yeah, it's just like well, it's um, gonna, it's a control conversation. Right. It's a puppet master conversation, and you know, so like I don't know if this woman is actually going to release this money when you're ready to buy a house. I can't tell. Yeah, I'm sometimes worried about that because yeah. um, yeah. she's actually taken out the the growth that's already come onto the account over time. So, yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Oh, she took it out and used it herself. Yeah. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Which, I mean, the original balance is still there. So that was her call, but. Wow. Uh, yeah, that was not something I expected. I was about to this say, just Dave. just a little strange. So here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go about the business of building up your own down payment. Mm -hmm. And then if that money's there and she wants to give it to you, fine. If not, just tell her to keep it. Yeah, absolutely. That's fair enough. That's pretty much the plan. Yeah. Uh, either way. <laughs> yeah, because I, I don't think you're going to win this argument one way or the other. Because the problem with her actually letting you buy a house with the 75000 is that's the last conversation she has where she gets to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. And she really likes telling you what to do. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I okay. So I got to ask you this. I'm surprised at your answer. I was a little surprised. It's great. I mean, it's dead on, but I thought, don't you just die on that hill with the grandma? You told me this is what it was for. I'm not going to fight with you and ruin our relationship, but this that's is what- it. That's it. Yeah. I mean, because listen, you can hear what's yeah. happening with this lady, uh-huh. and there is no winning the argument with this woman. 100% agree. Okay. So why have the argument? Because you're not going to win it. Right. You're either going to sever the relationship over $7,000, and the money's not the thing, it's the control. Mm hmm. And, um, so, and then the other side of that is if I'm making a gift, if I'm the grandma, Uh okay, I've often said on the air, you're going to get my money. You're going to get my instruction. Okay. But I have never given someone a gift and then managed it. (laughs) (laughs) Right. That's not a gift. Yeah. That's, that's controlling. So that's, you know, but I I would say I'm not going to give you this gift if you're not doing these things. Yeah. But once it's given, mm-hmm. you need to take your hand off of it. I agree. And uh, So you're saying don't even try to have the conversation and go, hey, listen, I don't I, want to fight. I don't want this I, to go I sideways. I think you just say, Grandma, I love you and thank you for the money. Okay. And I hope it's there. Okay. If you still want to do it when we get ready to buy a house, that'll be fine because we're going to go ahead and start building up our own down payment. I know you'll be proud of us when we did that. I love you. Thank mm-hmm. you. And just keep moving. Because what it does just takes all of her power away, and she mm. really is a lot about power. <laughs> That's true. What happens when gra- if Grandma dies before this? I suspect the trust has terms that leave it to that would, the beneficiary of the trust, which is, her. Which is Amelia. Okay. That, okay. Yeah. That's good. I needed to process through that because yeah. sometimes it's like principle. Let's have the conversation, and I think you're right. Now, as I process what you said, I'm, it's I'm, like I'm channeling my inner John Deloney. Just- <laughs> Just tell them you love them and keep going. I think you're right. I was wondering, though. I was like, okay. I'm trying to be nicer. Deloney inspired me to be nicer. He's very nice. He is a nice guy. Very in touch with his feelings and ours. He's in touch with everyone's feelings. He really is. (laughs) He really is. That's good. And he has a lot of feelings. (laughs) Yes. He's not even here to defend himself. We're ragging on him. (laughs) No, he's awesome, man. He's he's, he's great. I love it. Regina is in Nashville. Hi, Regina. How are you? Hi, Dave. Hi. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Hello, uh, Ken, also. How are you guys doing today? Great. How can we help you? We're short on time. Go straight to it. Okay, straight to it. Um, all right. I'm unemployed. My husband just got a job about three weeks ago. We moved from uh, California to the Murfreesboro area uh, in October. I'm having a heck of a time finding a job. We owe a ton in taxes, and our finances are a mess. What did you used to do? Uh, well, my last position, I was an office assistant. I've basically been in office for about the last 20 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, my goal is to become a loan signing agent within the next couple of months. Uh, so I'm looking for, you know, something to tide me over until that can be enough of an income so that I can do that. You well, know, then here's what you do. So, Regina, let me let me encourage this is a really good job market in Tennessee and, and certainly in the greater national area. And you need to be just getting a job or two right now. You've got an income problem. And so you can drive, uh, you can deliver pizza. You can show up and work at a grocery store. You can work at a warehouse. Don't just limit yourself to office management positions when that's going to be a short-term play, it seems like, for you anyway. Right now, this is urgency. And so we're going to go get a job, two job, three jobs. Just go get a job, get stable, and then get back up on the horse towards that purposeful plan. Do anything. Yeah so that you can do anything later. That's right. Work like a crazy person. And yeah, there's there's positions out there, lots of them Mm -hmm. in the Murfreesboro area. Murfreesboro's booming, booming. But you need to broaden your focus to almost anything instead of so narrow so you get landed in, get the wolf away from the door. Because you got this wolf howling outside and it's driving you crazy. This is The Ramsey Show.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jonathan and Rachel are in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Says on my screen, you guys are ready to do a debt-free scream. What's up? Hey, how are you? Great. How much debt have you guys paid off? We've paid off $102,000 in two years, so 24 months. Way to go. And your range of income during that time? So we started at about um, seventy-five thousand. Um, by the time we were done, we were we were around about one hundred and fifteen thousand, and now we're back down to about seventy thousand. But that'll be going up soon, we hope. Good, good deal. So, what do you guys do for a living? Um, I'm a dental hygienist, and I work for UPS. Very good. Um, but while we were paying off our debt, um, I, I was a dental hygienist, but me and Jonathan, we both worked at a um, at a restaurant together. He was the kitchen manager, and I was a waitress, which I've done for several years. And we worked countless hours. Between the two of us, we usually worked about 60 to 80 hours a week. So wow. it was wow. definitely hard. <laughs> how old are you guys? Um, we're both 29. Very good. And how long have you been married? Oh, this year will be eight years we've been married. Yeah. So what happened two years ago that lit you up? You got on fire. Um, well, it's funny. I, I was scrolling through um, Facebook one day, and we watched. Uh, um, I watched a YouTube video of someone doing their debt-free scream, and I just remember thinking there's no way we could ever do this. But I went ahead and bought your book, and it literally took me a whole year before I picked it up and read it. <laughs> it makes a great but, coaster on a coffee table. Mm. It actually was. Um, and so I read the book, and the next day I came to Jonathan, and I was like, listen, I think this is what we need to do. And first he was like, okay, we, you know, we can do it. And then, if, you know, it was hard at first. And then one day I came to him, I was like, listen, we cannot be working in restaurants for the rest of our lives. It's not what we want to do. And he was like, okay, we'll, we'll buckle down. And we did. So. And that was two years ago that you went crazy. It was two years ago that we went crazy. Yep, we remember every moment of it. <laughs> yeah, and you did $50,000 a year for two years. That's mm-hmm. impressive. We sure did. I mean, you've been on beans and rice, rice and beans for sure. We sure did. Um, there was many, many times we worked seven days a week for the most part. Oh. Um, you know, with Jonathan, he would get up some days at um, 6 a.m. to go to work, and we wouldn't leave till 1 a.m. Uh, for the restaurant. So mm. it was it was, it was rough. <laughs> yeah. And it's over. It's over. <laughs> Will you ever go back in debt? Oh, never again. Never again. What kind of debt was this? Um, It was several things. We had uh, student loans mostly and then uh, cars and credit cards. Not a whole lot of credit card debt, though. Mm-hmm. And we had a little bit of uh, medical debt. I think mostly it was um, our student loans and car loans. So we had a lease at the time, which was very dumb. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm so proud of you guys. Well done. Thank you. You are not afraid of hard work. No. And when you (laughs) get after not. And you're not afraid to work together. And these are very important things. So what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Because you did it. Honestly, it's just staying focused. It it really I don't know. I tell people it really wasn't that hard once we put our minds to it. You know, we, we worked a little bit more, but we were already working so much that it just, you know, it kind of, after a while, it came natural. It was actually kind of fun. You know, every month we'd just pay off. I mean, more and more would go towards the snowball, and it was just, it was, it was kind of fun. Yeah. Well done. Well, I want to ask a question to both of you because this is, this is something that I think people need to catch. The fun part was the momentum each month. Mm-hmm. But there have got to be times when you're working that kind of schedule where you go, I know why we're working this hard. I don't ever want to have to work this hard again. Uh, Am I right? You are absolutely right. Um, Jonathan's been lucky um, going from working 80 hours a week to until he starts in his full-time position at his job. He's down to 20 hours a week, and this is everything he's ever dreamed of was <laughs> to work less. <laughs> well, I'm hoping you've taken a few naps, Jonathan, because you've earned Oh, I, every day. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. That's good to know. That's good. That's so great. Well done, you guys. Who were your biggest cheerleaders other than the two of you? Oh, gosh. Definitely my mom for sure. Um, your parents. Yeah. yeah, our parents. Both of our parents have been really supportive through the whole process. Mm-hmm. We we really didn't have, you know, I know a lot of people that go through the debt-free journey, they have some naysayers. We really didn't. We had everybody was so proud of us on board with it, so that helped so much. My mom and dad, I mean, my dad would, would text me or message me every so often, how much longer, how much longer? I'm like, we're getting there. We're working on it. 
I'd yeah. love to ask both of you, how has your relationship grown when you've come together so intensely uh, on such a big goal and worked so hard? How has your relationship, your marriage grown? I would say it's definitely grown a lot closer. Um, we've always you know, had a great relationship, but uh, it's just a lot of give and take and, and a lot of working together. And this has definitely helped, helped strengthen that, I feel like. I mean, I think it's helped us a lot because we've been able to, we knew we were putting in an equal effort, you know, nobody, we didn't give up on each other. We didn't, you know, as many times as we wanted to say, okay, well, let's go buy this. It's like, no, I mean, if, if you don't get something then I'm not going to get something. So I think that really, really helped, you know, it helped strengthen our relationship. It helped us keep us motivated. So what are you dreaming about? They're hearing that people are hearing this story. They're watching this on YouTube. What are you dreaming about now that you're on the other side of this as a couple? Um, well, we eventually want to have kids, so that'll be, you know, we wanted to kind of get out of debt to do that, but our most, um, reachable dream right now, we need to fix our shower. So that's what we're saving for now. That's our dream. (laughs) All right. We'll take the little dreams. That's good. That's good. That's a good first step. Well done, you guys. Very well done. You're impressive young rock stars. Yeah. You got a bright future ahead of you. You know how to work together and you know how to work. And uh, and you know how to execute and uh, lay out a plan and execute on it. You can do that with any part of your life now, and you'll be able to do this for the rest of your lives. Absolutely. So, very well done. Excellent, excellent work. New grooves are in your brain. You are ready to rock. We got a copy of Chris Hogan's Absolutely. book for you, Everyday Millionaires. That is the next chapter for you. And uh, let's count it down. I love it. Hundred and two thousand dollars paid off in two years, making seventy five to one fifteen. A lot of work. Jonathan and Rachel, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. All right. Three, two, one. We're debt-free. Yeah! (laughs) Thank you. Well done, you guys. We're so proud of you. Excellent. You know, we had some uh, friends over for dinner the other night a couples two couples and we were telling old stories from when we were that age because that's the age we were when we were bankrupt and uh the guys like one of the one of the men sitting there was quizzing sharon he's doing the interview routine right <laughs> and uh getting her side of the story yes because you know, everybody here, everybody hears my side of the story all the and time and sharon right? sharon's great people yeah. don't realize how fun she is when she answers questions so she's like oh is he yellow pad and he said, "What do you mean?" She said, "Well, when we we make a we every night we sat down with this stupid yellow pad and wrote out a plan of what we were going to do mm-hmm. this week, next week, and what we were going to do ten years from now." And she said, "We kept writing that yellow pad, and we kept writing that yellow pad, and we were you know the way we got through bankruptcy and the way we rebuilt our lives was with a freaking plan and doing it together, and it's a yellow pad." And, you know, she can see it in her head, and I can see it. I remember that little oak table. Mm-hmm. We're sitting at that little oak pedestal table, and we're sitting there with that yellow pad going, okay, next thing's fix the shower. That's what made me think of it. Yes. You know, it's stuff like that. The first yes. thing, you know, you, you know, before you start talking about being a millionaire, you, you fix the shower. It's the truth. <laughs> I thought it was a great answer because that the, shows the sacrifice. Yeah. They literally rice and beans working themselves they did not to fix the, nub. the shower. No, yeah. this is awesome. What great, great yeah. couple! Because that's exactly what we did. We had, you know, we had to fix the roof. We had to fix the heat yeah. and air. Mm. That dadgum air conditioner was out. You and I've talked about this a lot. How good is that shower gonna feel? <laughs> It not is. because it's working, yeah, but because of how hard but you But if you work. went down to Home Depot and put it on a Home Depot card, <laughs> oh, it would spit acid on you. Yeah, it's the truth. It'd be like shards of glass. Yeah, <laughs> It'll never work. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, this is The Ramsey Show.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we talk to you about your life and your money. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Scotty is with us in West Palm Beach. Hey, Scotty, how are you? I'm great, Dave. And uh, Ken, both of you, thanks for taking uh, my call here and helping me out. Sure. How can we help? I'm a, I'm a uh, new sole proprietor, mm-hmm. and I set up my business checking and savings account. Good. But um, the bank named both of them as my DBA, and I was under the impression from you that it should have, like, you know, XYZ Corp tax savings account or, or something to that uh, effect. Oh, um, no, no. It doesn't have to be named that by the bank. You just got to nickname it that on the file. Oh, okay. Because I didn't want you know the IRS to say, well, you have a checking name for you and you have a savings name. No, no. The IRS, the IRS never sees any of that. All we're trying to do is make sure you set aside money out of your profits for taxes so you can pay your quarterly estimates, and you just need a savings account to do that. And by that, I mean a separate savings account that you're not saving for something else in, and so you accidentally spend your tax money when you buy the something else. Right, and that's what I've done. Yeah. They're totally separate. So then the next, the last question is, after I take that 25% out, since I'm just a sole proprietor, what's the best way to pay myself? Well, just off the, the, the business, the, the debit card, or... Or do I really need to set up with, with a payroll company? No, you don't need a payroll company. You can just write a check out of your mm-hmm. account. So just write, write you're, 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 you're a startup, one-man show, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. What kind of business are you doing? What are you doing? I'm starting a small messenger uh, courier service. Okay, cool. So you get some money in, and you throw it into the checking account. When you get ready to bring some money out of that checking account home, you set 25% of that amount over into that savings, and the other 75% comes out in a, just a personal check written to you. Uh, okay, out of my business account. Yeah, uh, you're right. Of, you, yeah. So you, you take your business account, and there's $1,000 in there mm-hmm. that you want to bring some home out of that business account and pay some bills or eat and some yeah. stuff like that. Then you would write a $250 check in to save and move it over into that savings account. You'd write a $750 check and take it home. Can, I, now, does it strictly have to be a check? It couldn't be just out of the It could be anything. Uh, but if you, you, you know, how, however you're going to do it. I mean, if, if you can okay. use it, how are you going to transfer? You could just do a transfer mm-hmm. if it's inside, yeah. the, you know, on your website. But right. but just always keep that 75-25 rule going because, in effect, you are withholding, like your employer withholds on you. They hold money out for taxes. And that's what we're doing with that 25% going over into savings. Right, and pay that, and then that becomes my quarterly. Exactly, and that becomes and that becomes the equivalent of a payroll company doing withholding. That's why you don't need a payroll company at this stage. Fantastic. I wouldn't screw with a payroll company until you have employees. Got it. And then it's then it's worth it using one to not have to mess with the IRS calculations for all the employees, which will drive you freaking bananas. That's another story, though. Mm. Yeah, that's thank goodness. Very wise. You you have listened to some of the entree leadership materials very carefully, Scotty, and you've done a great job with that. So, Ken, uh, the reason we've instructed people to do what Mm -hmm. Scotty's doing that are opening solo panure things is. Uh, the number one cause of small business failure, and especially a solopreneur crashing, is cash flow problems. Cash flow problems mean you don't have any money. Why don't you have any money? Because you didn't pay your taxes and you get behind with the IRS, or you go into a bunch of debt. Yeah, and so what we've instructed here is this is a situation we didn't get into this part of the conversation, but if this is a side hustle for a while, you know, if that's the situation and you have a day job, then I would just keep loading up that bank account and 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 until it can until you're paying yourself something that you really can use, uh, just get that company healthy. In his situation, where it may feel like he's doing this full time uh, and giving it a go, uh, having that tax and pulling that aside and being disciplined there, uh, that's going to help you tremendously. Tremendously as you learn the ropes of this, because the first time you start a company, you realize there are tax benefits. Get yourself a great Ramsey tax advisor. You know, get somebody who really knows what they're doing to make sure that you're protecting yourself. Because people don't realize when they work for a regular company where people pull all this out, they just don't think about it. They see the well, number. Anything that's a 1099. Yes. So, I mean, if you're if you're running uh, Uber Eats. Yes. 
And, Same thing. And they're not holding taxes out on you. You better pull it aside. You're gonna, you know, you run ten thousand dollars up. You're gonna get a two thousand five hundred dollar extra tax bill at the end of the year, and you got no money for that. Mm-hmm. That's gonna bite you in the butt. Yep. And pressure. that's what happens in yep. a small business solopreneur startup like that's that. It. That's right. You can get behind on those taxes because you act like they're not there and live off of all the money. That's right. And that's a bad plan. Yeah. And don't pay your if you don't have. I just I get this call a lot on the Ken Coleman show. Just want to point out if you don't have to pay yourself right now and you can live off that day job do it yeah stack some money up in that side hustle yeah and just let it sit there or pull it all out and throw it on your debt if that's what you're doing if you're in the debt snowball absolutely put every nickel towards it after taxes archelli is with us hey archelli how are you hi i'm doing well thank you for taking my call good pronounce your name for me i destroyed it it's Araceli. A- Araceli. Okay, no thank you. It was just the C. It was pretty good. I messed it up. Okay, but it's somebody's <laughs> name. It's important. That's no, right. no, no. I've, I've got an aerosol and so many others, so you're close enough. <laughs> That's great. Well, I didn't do that. Yes. So. All right, how can we help? I have a predicament. I'm in the middle of a divorce. Oh, no. um, I get to keep the house. My girls are staying with me. Um, one's 19, the other one's 17. Um, there's no alimony or child support, anything into the equation. The house is paid in full and I am going to pay him out, um, 200,000, $200,000. So my question is whether I take out a loan to pay him that amount or, um, my attorney indicated I could take out penalty free that money from my 401k. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to do. Which option would be better? Lose the interest on my 401k by doing that or have this other loan, which with all the uncertainty of me now being head of household and having what is your income? all the bills and everything. Um, when, about 120. Okay. Well, I, 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 I hate how you I got turned. here. I hate how you got here. But if you call me up and said, I have a $200,000 mortgage on a 15-year fixed rate and I make $120,000 a year and I got two teenagers, I wouldn't be panicked hearing that. But I don't, li- I don't like how we got here, obviously. You don't either. It's been painful. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm just, you know, I've always had the cushion of having him as a backup. Um but me now being the sole head of household, yeah. How old are you? That free would give me fifty. Okay. So I mean, if you take out a fifteen-year mortgage of sixty-five, the house is paid for or sooner if you pay it off early, right? Yeah. And as the kids grow and move out, you know, you're going to have more margin and room in your budget to throw serious money at this house and get it paid off early. So yeah, I think you take out a fifteen-year fixed-rate mortgage. Okay. And don't listen to your attorney yeah, been... for financial advice. He's not very smart. <laughs> no, I, it was just because my I didn't, you know, coming into having all this obligation now on me and the responsibility. Um, no. I wasn't. I'm if not you told me you being... made seventy thousand, I'd be telling you to sell the house. You understand that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Because you couldn't afford no. to live there because of this horrible okay. situation you've gone through. I'm so sorry. Mm. So, ouch. right, thank you. No fun at all. How long were you married? 22 years. How you doing? Hanging in there. Sounds like it. Yeah. Here's what we're going to do. I want you to go through Ramsey Plus for a year. I'm going to pay for it, which puts you into Financial Peace University and puts you into every dollar premium and shows you how to handle money because somebody needs to give you a hug right now, and that's me and Ken, okay? Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I appreciate this advice. I've been one day debating one option, one day debating the other, and I'm just trying to figure out long term what would be the best. Well, the problem is none of these options are wonderful because of a less than wonderful situation. Yeah. And so it's it's not good, but you're going to get through it, and we're going to show you how, and we'll walk with you, kiddo. I'm sorry. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books.
This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life, your money, and with Ken here, especially your career. Yeah, looking for jobs, uh, thinking about telling the boss to take this job, and well, Ken can help you. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> a little Johnny Paycheck reference yeah, there. Just got it, brought that in there. I love Just like that. that. That's a nice, What smooth a great move. song. Yeah, it's a classic. A bunch of young people need you to finish that line. The, th- yeah. the song is take this job and shove it. Yeah. And we're we're trying to help you do that. Don't Absolutely. jump. Yeah. Don't jump. Absolutely. Find the right job. Have Keep them. paying off debt. You don't have to go backwards in your debt snowball. You can actually pursue work you've always wanted to do and not stop the baby steps. There you go. We get that question a lot, there you which go. is a, it's a natural question. Phone number. We'll tell you how. Phone number. 888-825-5225. Johnny is with us in San Antonio. Hi, Johnny. How are you? Hey, doing great, guys. How are you doing? Better than we deserve. What's up, brother? Great. Thanks for taking my call. So I'm uh, in my mid to late 60s, and I'm thinking about retiring soon, and I want to know I've got some money in savings, and I wanted to know if it's better to put it towards the mortgage or uh, do some kind of investments, IRA, or if, and if you have an ELP in San Antonio, you would recommend. Uh, my income is uh, 75 annual. My wife's Social Security is about eight fifty a month. Um, we have investments of uh, we have a fixed annuity of around forty k, and an IRA. My wife has an IRA of sixteen k, so that's a total of fifty six. Cool. Mortgage is two thirty eight uh, on a two point seven five thirty year fixed, and we're four years into it. Good for you. Well, as you probably have heard, if you listen for more than about three minutes, we talk about the baby steps all the time, which is the clear path to wealth. And uh, the idea being we're out of debt. So you're out of debt, everything but your house, right? Right. Cars are paid for. The house is the only thing. And you have your emergency fund of three to six months of expenses in place, your rainy day fund, right? Right. Good. Yeah. In savings right now, I've got 33 k and I'm getting another $5,000 bonus. Good. Uh, we okay. do have 5 k allocated for a new range uh, yeah. that we need to replace. Good. Good. That's the only major well, your, expense. Your next goal is continue putting 15% of your household income into retirement and to continue to build your nest egg. And let's get this house paid off. That's baby steps four and six. Right. And so lean into that house and let's get that thing finished off. How much you said you got oh two hundred and something on it, right? Yeah, two thirty eight. Yeah. yeah. So let's uh and that becomes a big goal because if by the time you quit work, if you have a really nice nest egg and a paid for house, you have a very stable situation. Uh, if when you retire you still have a home mortgage, it's destabilizing. It's less than stable because you've got that stinking payment laying there staring at you. And um uh, it, it changes the last 30 years of your life to live in a paid-for house dramatically. So, well done. You're on your way. Tamron is in New York City. Hey, Tamron, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you so much for having me. How are you doing today? Better than I deserve. How can we help? I am calling. I recently I have a question that relates to college and when um, it is okay or sensible or to derail the plan and borrow for college. My husband and I, we actually didn't even discover um, your system until during the pandemic. And we've paid down a lot of debt. We sold a rental property, um, set up our emergency fund. Wonderful. You made a lot of progress in one year. Well, selling the selling the rental property gave us a large sum and we're blessed to have terrific careers. Mm-hmm. Um but my oldest son is a senior in high school this year, and last year he expressed an interest that his dream school was a um, prestigious private university that's around here. I graduated law school from there myself, so um, tugged at my heart, and I was supportive of him that if he 
did everything that was necessary and got the grades and kept everything up as long as he could get scholarships and aid and the out-of-pocket expenses for us was less than $25,000 a year that we could afford to pay cash through the school's payment plan and that he could go there. Um, my sophomore, however, um, he had some trouble um, when he started high school last year and he was getting into trouble and he was making poor decisions. And then when they closed the schools down, he kind of continued to go down a, a scary path from our perspective. And he asked us if he could go away to um, a boarding school, to a military school that's uh, not too far from where we live. And seeing that that was best for him, we immediately in December agreed and enrolled him and sent him. But I'm now paying $2,500 a month for him to go to school. (laughs) And our budget only has, after all of the um, bills and essentials, um, like food and, you know, clothing allows and haircuts, like really the full budget only has about four thousand dollars to spare in it what's your so household income? i don't know um right now we're at about 240 and i will be wrapping up my um clerkship my post law school clerkship so i would expect that next year it'll be um closer to 300 if not over 300 which will give you the money to send the other one Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's why I was... Yeah, there's not a plan where I derail and put you into back student and loans. Forth. <laughs> to answer your earlier question, I'm there's sorry. not a plan where I put you into student loans. Okay, there's two options okay. here. One is we figure this out, or Junior picks a different school. Okay. And his future is not ruined based on that. Mm-hmm. In pause, mm-hmm. listen. Pause is doesn't mean never. Doesn't mean stop. It's he could do pause. his first year somewhere else. That's three, right. Years three through four. Yeah. Uh, or two through four mm-hmm. at the at the uh, dream prestige school again if he lines up all the scholarships and it's twenty five thousand out of pocket with no student loans. He can also work towards okay. this, you know. I mean, he understands what's going on in the family, and assuming you guys are there's some harmony there, and he's as healthy as an eighteen, seventeen, eight year old can be about his brother's situation, he can work and kind of help out. You know, with this process as well, and yeah. say, "Hey, here's where we're. I think this is a family meeting. I think you sit him down. He's a, he's a, yeah. he knows what's going on, and just say, "Hey, here's where we are. This is reality. Student loans is not an option. We're not going to do that. Okay. This is what Dad and I've been doing. You've seen us getting out of debt. Bring him into the bigger picture and say, "Hey, life happens sometimes. Well, we, yeah, this is a you know, it's not fair. That's it's, right. It's sad, and you didn't do anything wrong, mm-hmm. uh, and yet it's affecting you. But still, it is affecting mm-hmm. you, and so here's what we're going to do. Uh, let's pretend that you're, you lost your job, and you, you couldn't send him to that school. You'd have the same conversation, mm-hmm. and it wouldn't be his fault. You, know, you would have lost your job, and he would have had to deal with that. Kids, kids can deal with this. So hold on. We're going to send you a copy of Anthony's book, Debt-Free Degree. I want you all to read that as a family, and I want you to commit to working some kind of a cash flow game plan to some school that you pay cash for. This is The Ramsey Show. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings.
I know what it feels like to think you're never going to be able to save money. I know what it feels like to think you're never going to get out of debt. But you can actually do it. And we can show you how. It's what we do inside of Ramsey Plus. Ramsey Plus is our step-by-step plan that gets you quick wins so you can make faster progress on your debt. And once that debt's gone for good, you get more money back in your pocket. The best part is you can try it for free. Once you become a member, you'll also get benefits like the Federal Classic e-file with Ramsey Smart Tax, free included. The audiobook of Rachel Cruz's brand new bestseller, Know Yourself, Know Your Money, free included. And, of course, Financial Peace University. And, of course, Every Dollar Premium version. And, of course, you're going to finally get your money under control. And we're going to show you exactly how to do that. You can try it for free before before becoming a member. Just go to DaveRamsey.com slash Ramsey Plus and check out the free trial. DaveRamsey.com slash Ramsey Plus. Plus, Riverside, California is on the line. Ken is calling. Hi, Ken. How are you? Hey. Hi, Dave. Hi, Ken. Thanks for you? taking my call. Sure. Sure. How can we help? So it's going to start off sounding like a sob story. It's going to turn out with a good ending. I've uh, I've actually become debt-free, uh, went through a disability thing with, with a failed back surgery, turning 53 next week. But, Dave, I've done FPU coordinating multiple times. I'm just here to tell you, as everybody does, that your principles work, the baby steps work, and if I can do it, anybody can. Um, When I went from being, you know, high on the hog, owning a successful business to disabled, I lost a lot. Hmm. But I didn't lose hope, and I kept plugging away. I kept, you know, doing the FPU coordinating even after all that. Uh And, Dave, I've counseled people. I've helped people out. The principles work, obviously. I enjoy helping people. Here's my question. I won't, I won't ramble on too long. I'm looking at the coaching program. I've always done financial coaching as a ministry, though I've never charged for it. And turning 53 next week, I'm getting up there. I am disabled. My income is only just under 2000 a month here in California, which being debt-free, mortgage and everything, is a good thing. I'm just wondering, with Ken there, you know, with the career and everything else, is it a good idea for someone in my situation to save up, might take me six months to a year to do it, to get that certification to do it as a ministry? Well, uh, ministry, or would you charge for it? When you say ministry, what does that mean? I've never charged. I've always just done the financial coaching for free. It's just something that I've enjoyed giving back doing. I really feel like with my story, it's very relatable. A lot yes. of people feel like, wow, oh, this no guy question. can do it. Anybody can and stay positive, you know? Yeah. Well, look, when somebody asks me, is this a good career move, I walk them through the sweet spot analogy, which is very simple. Our creator gave people talent, things you do well, and you're supposed to use those as tools to do work that you love, that fires you up when you think about it, when you do it, and then allows you to accomplish, to produce results that mean something to you. Uh, We know that this means something to you. So the question is, if I talk to everybody that knows you, Ken, would they say that you're a good communicator? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. People are calling me all the time. I know. I'm helping people in my family right now. That's right. And you're good at instruction, which is what it takes to be a good coach. Communication. And you got to be good at communication. you got to be good at instruction. you got to have a heart for people. You have all three of those. So the answer is, yeah, this is a good move. I I would just challenge you. I have no problem with you doing it. pro bono or as a ministry. Uh, But I just sit here and I look at your situation and I think you could, uh, because there's no financial pressure on you to make money as a financial coach, that's a good thing um, because this takes time to build this. This is a one-to-one. We build one client at a time. Um, I just wonder why you wouldn't eventually charge because our our team can not only uh, train you how to be a really great coach, but how to build your business. Are you opposed to it? No, no, I just never have. I, I've done hundreds yeah. of, of appointments, you know, and I, I think you're. Anybody. I think you're going to do some of both if I'm you. Uh huh. Yes. I think you're going to start charging for some, and then occasionally you're going to see someone you just need to help, and you just want to do that, and mm-hmm. uh, you just want to mm-hmm. give them a leg up, and you want to get them started. But the the Ramsey preferred coaches who have gone through all of the training, and then that we send leads to, some of them are making pretty substantial mm-hmm. incomes. 
Uh, wow. the, the top ones are. And so let, let's just pretend, let's just say you made $100,000 a year doing this for fun. Uh, okay. Then you could also give away a bunch of your services as well, right? Sure, sure, yeah. There's no reason you Absolutely. can't do both. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pay for it. I want you to go through the training. Oh, that's great. That's you, need, you need to go through the training. Oh, my gosh. Seriously? You've yeah. earned it. You, you, you're the man. I mean, you got, listen, wow. get, having a testimony is a wonderful thing. Getting one's a pain in the butt. <laughs> oh, isn't that the truth? And you have been through that's hell. That's the truth. And so, yeah, I want you to go through the training. It's something yeah. I don't usually give away. It's a pretty expensive item. But uh, Madison, pick up, and we'll get him through the first series of courses. I, you can talk to the coaching team and figure mm. out what what the proper way to get him started on this is. Uh, and uh, just tell him I said this, is a, this one's a gift on me. That's so cool. You know, see, I can't, you know what? I, you, you see what I just did there? Mm-hmm. It's what I told him to do. Yeah. Go make a bunch of money. Yep. And give some away. Give some of it away. <laughs> yeah. Because he's going to be in a situation where he can uh, he can do financial coaching for somebody who maybe is going through something he went through. Yeah. And you can, uh, a physical injury that rocks your world. Well, I, and I got to tell you, man, it's uh, dad gum pain and medical bills are, uh, we see them in our counseling office, our coaching offices every day all mm-hmm. across America. Yeah. It's a it's a real real thing yep. without a doubt. Yep. Yep. Gene is with us in Colorado Springs. Hi, Gene. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you so much for taking my call. Without going into all the gory details, um, my husband and I have separate accounts. Um, we just put the house in both our names. I have no debt. He already had a home equity loan on the house plus a car loan. Now, he wants to borrow more money to buy some firearms. And with the house being in both our names, it's joint tenants, not survivorship. I would have to sign some papers to say I consent to him getting a lien on the house. Should I do it? To buy guns? Yes. How old are you guys? I'm 68 and he's 76. And how long have you been married? Over 15 years. Okay. I have a huge gun collection. I'm a gun guy. I cannot possibly imagine Uh borrowing on my house to buy a freaking gun. I I'm a gun guy. I'm your husband. Okay, I, I would I would be on his side, but I can't possibly imagine what what gun purchase there could be that justifies borrowing on your personal home to buy it. What is he buying? A tank? No, they're um, single shot, high wall, low wall, whatever. Um, and he <laughs> went to a he went to a gun shop, and they had these great deals. And he knows he could get a lot of money off selling them. Yeah, he doesn't need to get in the firearms business at seventy six years old by borrowing on his home. No, I, I I don't think this is a good plan. And if he called me, I would tell him not to do it. And so I'm going to tell you not to la- allow your home to be done because when this all goes si- sideways and he can't sell these guns. Uh, for whatever reason, as an individual or a collector or whatever he's getting into here. I can't tell what the flip he's getting into, but uh, it must be in a very expensive collectible gun of some kind. It sounds, yeah, it sounds like, like he got a great deal. He thinks, oh, I can buy this now, hold from on to it. From a gun shop. He's going to steal it from a gun shop. Yeah, like they're going to give him a deal so he can make a lot on it. I got questions. Yeah, I'm thinking <laughs> ding, 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 <laughs> warning, warning, warning. Because that's what retailers are known for, Dave. Yeah, they're known for giving things away at cheap so you can make more money on it later yeah it, gun shops are known for not having no idea the value of the guns in their shops I'm not we're familiar. being sarcastic right, exactly. Gene. <laughs> your husband's plan sucks don't get into debt to do it and that's from a couple of gun guys oh my gosh wow can't believe i told somebody not buy a gun i know it just happened right here yeah that's harder than telling them not buy a boat <laughs> wow this is the ramsey show
Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. A 100% satisfaction guarantee means even if you mismeasure, you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Always use the magic word, the promo code RAMSEY. Today's question comes from Amy in Nebraska. She writes in, I have a job interview coming up for an entry-level position as an assistant manager for a coffee chain. If salary is not brought up by my interviewer, when is the best time for me to ask about it? Uh, You ask about it when they offer you the job because presumably, not always, but presumably when they offer you the job, Amy, they're going to tell you uh, what they are offering the job at as an hourly rate. And at that point, uh, then you can discuss that. But I would not ask about it early on. I always tell people, Dave, in the interview process, uh, you want to convince that hiring manager that you will help them win. We've got to remember that. They're people, too, and they're looking for somebody that's going to help them win. And so uh, there will come a time in this particular question where uh, the uh, the hourly rate, the salary, whatever that is, is going to come up. Wait I would not they bring get it up. completely through the interview, mm-hmm. and you're walking out of your first interview, and you still have no idea what the pay is, you don't ask? Well, uh, fair question. But in this situation, um, you, can, you have a good idea what an hourly rate is going to be at a coffee shop. You have a pretty good idea, and you can find that out uh, pretty easily. You have a ballpark range. I mean, it's not going to be something like seven, eight, nine dollars an hour. You're probably going to be in that low range. Would be ten with the minimum wage politicizing that's going on right now. You're probably going to be in that twelve to fifteen dollars an hour. So you shouldn't walk into an interview like that going. I have no idea what I can and can't do. So it's a good point to bring up, but you have, a, have to have an eye, uh, an eye on the type of work and do your homework prior to the job. That's what I teach. Yeah. You can find out what people are paying. You can find out if it's a good coffee shop to work at before you ever show up. So I, I agree with the general sentiment that you would not uh, – if someone – I teach our guys here in recruiting. If they lead with what do you pay, what are the benefits, just end the interview. Yeah, totally agree. Because they're here for what they can take, not yeah. what they can give. Yeah. And so it's over. Yeah. And so that's the other end of that sentiment, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but I, I would be perfectly careful at the end of the interview, mm-hmm. if nothing has been brought up, to start with, that's a really sucky interviewer that does not cover some of what's going on that in is the true. interview. That okay? is true. But uh, if that's the case, uh, you get to the end of it and just go, Hey, I really appreciate our time, our conversation. I, I think I can add value here. If this were to work out, what is the general yeah, range? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. What's the range? I'm fine with that. Or something like that. Yes. Just so I, I kind of so I kind of know what to anticipate. Yeah. Yeah. A- and then you can go that cuz that you may want to rule them out. Yes. You may I, not want to go through three interviews and get hired for well, yes. half of what you think you're going to yeah. get. Well, you're not going to go through three interviews for an hourly wage like this for an Probably entry level not, job. No. So I, that is good context that I agree with. My point is this. When you're going for an entry level position, you need to have already done your homework on that place. Do they treat people like they're just robots and soulless people and they're just moving, burning churn through this? Do some homework. Find out. Is this a great place to work? You can do that very easily. It's not difficult with all the resources we have in this world so with that being the context i'm always wanting people to show up at that interview and and absolutely blow them away so that they go they want you and yeah. the time yeah. comes then that's you good decide. practice for a real job it is because you're not going to bring up salary you're no. not going to bring that up in the first no interview. you better not i mean it's, uh, it's bad i mean i had a young guy i'll never forget one of the way back i mean we had 10 people and we had this young guy, I ran into him, I was speaking at church, he came up, he was real enthusiastic afterwards, I was talking to him for 20 minutes, and, and I said, you know, he, he said, are you, you hiring for anything? I said, yeah, yeah. And he came over, and he sat down, and it was so disappointing, because he was such a rock star in so many ways, but the first thing out of his mouth is, okay, what's this pay? Yeah, and, and what are your benefits package? It makes me cringe hearing that. And it's because because he, you know, he instantly revealed his heart. Yes. Which yes. is, I'm here to take yeah. rather than to add. Yes. And I can't come into the business I own mm-hmm. with that attitude. Yeah. I'm That's, here to, what can I take versus what can I add? You better put some water in the bucket or there'll be no water in the bucket. Right. And remember, for entry-level jobs, 
you're up against a lot of people. It's a factory. So I want you to put your best foot forward. I'm not. Yeah. I, I like what you said. I, I'd be okay with that. But I want you to win the position, win their trust and confidence when yeah. they offer it. Then you say and you're probably going to do that in that first interview. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> to your point, it. to your point, they're not going to do six interviews no. like we do. And they're shuffling people through. Yeah. And uh, so you want to be classy. Did you fog up the mirror? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, in some places that's the case. Yeah. If yeah, you can you can get hired. To smile. Pass, pass, pass the drug test and fog up a mirror. Yes. You don't even have to smile. I can prove that by some of the people that serve coffee. So I'm that, just telling you. <laughs> Bad experience, Dave. Uh, I won't bring up a <laughs> yes. brand. No, don't. All right, Sierra in Orlando. Hey, Sierra, how are you? I'm well. Good afternoon. How are you guys? Better than we deserve. How can we help? I have a question about taxes. Um, this is the first year that I will be doing mostly contract work. I work as a PA, a physician assistant, um, and I reached out to, I think, two ELPs or three, and I got kind of three different answers, and I'm just confused. Um, one of them recommended that I open an LLC no. and then pay myself. No. Okay, I didn't like it. The other one said, yes, open the LLC pay your own payroll company no but they're wanting money monthly no and the third said just pay 25 percent every three months to the yep. irs yep. ding 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 there's your answer that's the one you want <laughs> okay yeah you, okay. You, you, what i would tell you to do is just to open a separate checking account mm -hmm. in your social security number it's a dba doing business as mm -hmm. and you have a little separate business account and you put all of your income into that business account when you want to pull money out of that and take it home to buy things at home or pay bills at home or pay debt at home or whatever, you hold back 25% over into a separate savings account to pay your quarterly estimates. And you'll probably, unless you make over $100,000 a year, 25% will cover it. Yes, it's probably between eight to 10 grand a month. Um, unfortunately, there is an LLC now open. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. If you want to run it through that, now that you did it, that's okay. Because it'll have its own EIN number, and you just run right. it through that. You can, but it's, it serves exactly the same purpose. You just mm -hmm. added the paperwork and yeah. the expense of the LLC to the process, and now you've also added a new tax return to the process because you get to file a tax yeah. return on the LLC. So you get to uh -huh. file a tax return plus the LLC file, files one. So you've... I want to but, ask you about that, day for her. It, it, shouldn't she just shut that down? Then why go through all those extra steps? I mean, uh, I know she opened it. She paid money probably for somebody to help yeah, her get it, that. You know, thing. it's just not that big a deal. It's to not file worth the tax it to return. shut it. It's, just, it's, okay. just, it's, not, it's a hassle because you got one extra tax return. Yeah. But, um, yeah. you know, you're going to have a, a Schedule C on, on your uh, mm -hmm. personal return if you don't do the LLC. Mm -hmm. So you've got some forms to fill out anyway So for taxes. So, you know, um, it's not the end of the world to do that. I definitely would not use a payroll company to pay yourself. <laughs> yeah. That's nightmarish. Uh, but, uh, I, I don't recommend solopreneurs unless they have lots of money. Uh, an LLC is not there for tax purposes. It's there for risk management. Mm -hmm. It's there for, if that company gets sued, you don't want to be the individual that owns it. Uh, so as an example, I actually own absolutely nothing now. I don't own a thing. It's all in LLCs, in corporations, in trusts. Um, and, uh, all of my real estate is, uh, my cars are even in, in an LLC. So if there's a car wreck, you can sue the car company that owns the cars because that's who owns them. I don't own them. And so, yeah. you know, the liability, it's a risk management tool mm -hmm. is all it is. It's to get the risk down. It is not to get taxes off of you. So I don't use LLCs for tax purposes. They don't really serve one. And in her situation, get educated on all those write-offs of being a 1099 or contractor. Because yeah. you'd be surprised at how much you can write off. Now that, you're good. Your tax ELP would be great for. A absolutely. This is The Ramsey Show.
Our scripture of the day, Romans 8, 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Robert Hughes said, The struggle you're in today is developing the strength you need tomorrow. Well, that's the truth. Mm-hmm. Brandon's with us in Salt Lake City. Hi, Brandon. How are you? Hi, I'm doing great. How about you guys? Better than we deserve. How can we help? Wow, it's a pleasure to be talking to you both. Uh, I'm very thankful for the opportunity you guys are to, to help me out. I, I'm uh, I'm currently in the job application process. I'm a senior in college, and um, I'm currently I, – so I've applied to a position that I really, really would like – for a large corporation, but the one problem is I'm trying to be proactive and trying to contact the, or anyone, a recruiter, just to say, Hey, this is my job application, trying to stand out from all these, from all these candidates, but I can't find a recruiter um, because there's, there's hundreds of them in this company. Um, I do have a contact for, I'm actually connected with the person I'd be applying for. Um, on LinkedIn, great. But I, I'm, <laughs> I don't know if it would be wrong for me just to jump the whole recruitment process. Oh, and, yeah. and contact them directly. Oh yeah, but I, Ken, Ken's going to tell you how to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Well, what are you, what are you worried about? If you reach out to them directly, you're going to get, like, they're going to blackball you. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, kind of like, oh, this is annoying. He's just, he's not following the, the. the and, and you've already well, applied. Dude, you've already applied correct that's correct i applied about a week ago yes yeah well it's a major company so they've got a big big system and they've got a process so you know one way you could go about this that i think would not get you in hot water you've got the person who's hiring linkedin information so you're a pretty resourceful young man uh i do a handwritten note just something simple hey just want to let you know i've applied recently and uh love the company if I ever get the opportunity to work here, here's why I'd want to work here. Really short, sweet. Yeah, let me give you another line sentences. to enter into that, okay? Yeah, go ahead. And, and just in that right. note, go, hey, and there's a fine line between showing initiative and being just weird. Yeah. I want to be right near that line. <laughs> yeah, acknowledge that you've done some homework. <laughs> yeah. But I'm okay with that because yeah. a handwritten note is not creepy. No. And you find their but email it, and they're wondering how in the world did you get that. But I, if I read that and I'm the executive on the other side, I'm going to go, that's funny. Yes. I like this guy. I love that, Dave. That's a great suggestion. It's very, very good. I think the handwritten note is the way I would go. But now what I would really work on is through all of your contacts. Yeah, here we go. Here, This is the proximity principle, and we're looking at your web of connections. We know from sociology research that the number one way to get jobs is through acquaintances. So get outside of your family and friends that's that close personal network picture spider web we're going to go out okay so now we're looking at everybody we know on social media how many people you think they know so let's just i'm using this example say you got 500 friends on facebook well how many Mm -hmm. friends do each of those 500 have and you've got to get aggressive there and just Ask for people to help you. Don't be weird Does anybody about it. know anybody That's that works it. at X? Boom. I'm applying. I've already applied at company XYZ. Do you know anybody that works there? And let's see what that yields. And then I would go to the personal context, but outside of social media, same deal. Reach out to everybody you know. Hey, I just want a shot at an interview. That's not asking too much. That's not creepy. That's not arrogant. That shows desire and you'd be surprised what that will yield but you got to really work hard um and 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 then let the chips fall where they fall on the official submission because you're going to go through the system i'd have you look at the ken coleman resume guide uh we've got six templates in addition to the free one at the resume guide uh at my website kencoleman.com check that out submit the resume that way you know know, stand out let's just give it to him it's, it doesn't yeah, cost that's it. free. Yeah. Madison, oh, Mad- that, well, that's six oh, templates. Give too. him the six templates. Yeah, give him the yeah. six templates free and wow. use those to Thank reach you. in. Yeah. And, uh, then, and he's also, if you'll read the stuff, at the downloads that are free at KenColeman.com, yeah. it'll show you how to build the letter to get in contact. Now, I'll add one other thing to Ken's system, which Ken's system's flawless, but it's almost an old sales technique I used to use. If you do get an actual interview, mm-hmm. During the interview, ask when you should follow up and set an appointment for the follow-up. Love that. That way you're not pestering. That way you're just following through on what you said. And they said, well, you know, we'll know in a couple of weeks. Would it be okay if I contacted you on Mm -hmm. Friday the 14th? And they will say yes. 
And then when you call on Friday the 14th, they go, yes, that mm-hmm. Brandon said he was going to call. He called. That's a good <laughs> sign for him. But also, then you're not trying to chase somebody in phone tag or you're not trying to, you know, you're not worried that you're pestering them on a follow-up. Yeah. Because the follow-up is set. You schedule mm-hmm. your follow-up, and then it's not pestering. It's expected. And then let it go. I mean, one of the worst things you can do is just keep emailing somebody. Look, if they want you, trust me, they're going to get back to you. Do a great job. Do your best job in the interview. Do a follow-up. We have a touchpoint timeline free yeah, guide. And get six well. other places to go after while you're going after this place. That's right. Don't sit around and wait. Good idea, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Thanks. hold on. Pat, Madison will pick up, and she'll get you those templates and a copy of Ken's book, The Proximity Principle. We're going to set you up, man, for going to get yeah. the job you want. And oh, listen, yeah. I need you to call Ken Coleman on his show uh, and, and let him know if you get this job using these techniques. Oh, yeah. I want to hear the story. Yeah, we get a lot of fun emails. This stuff really does work. And here's the other thing. You know, if it doesn't work, let's 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 really figure out how to open up our connections. Because what people don't know, Dave, is is that they know everybody they already need to know. Yeah. I know that seems intimidating. It's the one degree of separation thing. It really is. Yeah. It's like when I was a kid, we played this thing called the match game. Uh, you got grandkids now. Yeah. Well, played, Do they still have the match we played, game? We played it with our kids. Yeah. Oh, good. And and so it's this idea of what you just start turning over the tiles and we go, okay, I saw an elephant here. I'm looking for another elephant. That's the, it's the simplicity of, I've got to be diligent. I know everybody I need to know. I got to keep talking about it. I got to keep asking. People will help if we ask the right way. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and don't, folks that are out there, okay, the, there's a lot of people looking for jobs. And mm-hmm. Ken can coach you on this. And you can get all the, the details you need. Ramsey Solutions will hire 340 people this year if we meet our hiring goals. However, we will have 25,000 applications come in. If you simply fill out an application and that's all you ever do, there is a high probability that we will have missed out on hiring you. It's true. Might as well play the lottery while you're doing that. It's really a long shot in today's world with so many people applying for jobs. So this thing of, I filled out 100,000 applications on Monster.com and not a one called me back. (laughs) Well, no crap. (laughs) Not right. a one did, yeah. you know, or I used ZipRecruiter and did all these multiple filings at one time. And ZipRecruiter is great. We advertise for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but you cannot just mass, you know, just throw enough mud against the wall to see if something sticks. You've got to find that singular connective spot with someone that knows someone that knows someone inside. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Joe's friend works over there and Joe's friend's name's Sally. Yeah. And Sally is going to get, you know, yeah. at least have a connectivity point. Well, here's another thing. We I got an this. email at the last break that a friend of mine had sent a lady who wants to work here. Right. And sent her, and I sent them over to HR. Sure. And that doesn't mean she's going to get hired, but it, she's not in the stack anymore. Oh, no. She's at the top. She's at the top of the pile. Well, she she may be at the top of the wrong pile. Right. But, you know, but she's in. Well, she's, she's not getting a in, look. She's not going to. She's getting a look. That's the issue. There's going to be a real consideration. Chances go up when we get interviews. Yeah. We're trying to get an interview. One thing we get all the time uh, on the on the Ken Coleman Show, Dave, is people say, okay, Ken, I did what you said. I really, truly don't have a connection to somebody in the company. And so the next best thing is with the, the resume guide and the resume templates at KenComo.com, we have flipped our resume. And the, the and HR could, team... Could you send that to that guy in, on LinkedIn? Can. But here's what you... Yeah, absolutely. You can reach out. But what we've done in our resume and our HR team has worked with me on this. We've got a world-class HR team at Ramsey Solutions. The top of our resume, Dave, says who I know. So if you don't have a connection to somebody in the company, let's use Ramsey Solutions example then maybe you should get a great endorsement from somebody who uh, is a world-class uh, financial advisor, smart investor pro, who we may not know personally, but they're in our network. Or if you're going into technology, get a great reference from somebody who's a big shot in that field. Yeah. It'll make them go, huh? Yep. There and you look go. at you. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace. Christ Jesus.